turning, 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 pressing the buttons, pressing the buttons. Are we going fast to the library? I gotta get there soon. Okay, slow down. Slow down. Should we park it? Park it? Park it? You want to help me park it? Okay, find a shady spot. Find a shady spot. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. That's good because you know it's noon. Choco Bear. It's a noon. I, I gotta go welcome everyone to the solstice. Solstice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the annual Summer Solstice Celebration at Burton Bar Central Library. You know, we've been doing this for 25 years, gathering on the fifth floor of the Great Reading Room to celebrate the first day of summer, the longest day of the year, and marvel at the architectural magic of this building. As a true Arizonan, there are few events I love more, and I felt lucky to bring my son to his first Solstice Celebration last year. This year, we gather virtually, and I know that's different, but you're gonna love it. Thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. First, want to acknowledge those of you who have made this a 25 year family tradition. For those of you attending for your first time, you're gonna learn a lot about our library. Today marks the longest day and shortest night of the calendar year. What a Phoenix thing to celebrate, right? I know this has been a difficult time for many, myself included. I'm happy you're here to celebrate our city's wonderful library system, and frankly, the sun. Many of you are experiencing the negative impacts of life today in many ways. But know this, the Phoenix Public Library is a force for good in our community, which you'll be hearing more about. But first, I want to turn it over to someone very special to our libraries who has a message for you. Hello, I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego, huge fan of the Phoenix Libraries. I wanna say thank you to all you do to support our libraries. This event is one of my favorite. It energizes me and reminds me how vital our libraries are to our city. Thank you for supporting them in this time of need. Thank you, Mayor Gallego. Now we will hear from Burton Bar Central Library design architect, Will Bruder, as he explains the magic of Solstice. I'm Will Bruder. For an architect, this is a, a, a unique privilege to be able to be in a building after 25 years and see all of you here in spirit at today's event. I'm happy to uh, invite you on this special tour today of the Burton Bar Central Library, a building that is celebrating its 25th silver anniversary. The architecture of the Phoenix Central Library is all about the idea of pragmatism, function, and poetry. And it's really designed to be about this place in the Southwest in the Valley of the Sun. So as you approach it from the outside, the library appears as a strange, almost geologic, mesa-like form. And it's a modern building clad in copper. And it's a very green, sustainable building. And so it presents this aspect of the landscape on the East and West. And in the North and South, it's about the transparency of the ideas inside. It's about light. And your eye goes up from the bottom to the top, looking at these huge windows, either on the north or the south. The room was designed around the sun. And the sun, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's always exciting with the skylights that you see on the edge of the building. But at the summer solstice, it was very carefully conceived and lay out, laid out that the roof is supported on cables appears to float as a magic cloud. And wherever you would normally follow the line of these tapered columns to the, to the ceiling, you'd expect it to support the roof. But it magically, through the cable network of the tensegrity roof, appears that the roof is floating on light. Taking that a bit farther, we have aligned the skylight features over each column to actually amplify the light coming through at the angle of the solar noon. On an ordinary day, you track the dawn to the dusk through the long edge skylights in the room. 
So these skylights on the west, east and the west edges of the room are six inch wide, 300 foot long. And as the sun passes each day and they come over, the sun comes over from the east. It comes over and it will form a curtain of light that slowly, slowly, over the course of about 15 minutes, comes from the top of the roof on that edge and suddenly it's kiss kissing the floor and the concrete wall with its lustrous finish and coloring suddenly glows in the light. And then if you look as it kisses the floor on the west, it rises as if you're pulling a stage curtain up on the eastern wall. So that's a typical day. There's light out of skylights over each column. The light is basically diffuse, typically through the day. It's laminated glass. It's the color of translucent blue. That's the color of glacial ice. Because as any of you that have seen a glacier, it is truly blue. It's phenomenal. So we tried to bring in this hot desert place, the idea of cool light and a room in the sky that, whose roof appears to float. So what's different on this solstice is we've calibrated very carefully because solstice actually means the day the, sta the sun stands still. So it's when the alignment of the poles are such that we've finally approached the longest day of the year, the axis of the earth is set at an angle, and when we go approaching the solstice in the longest day, we don't know what that's about. But as soon as you cross that line of the longest day, the first day of summer basically, we're starting to go into the next season and the angle of the earth starts going the other way. So what we were able to do by calculation by a book that we found in the library was figure out what the exact angle of the sun would be at solar noon on the solstice such that we were able to place a small clear aperture in the seven foot round pool of translucent light. And from that little seven inch hole, a beam of light comes over every column. So as you're looking up at the room at these columns, it focuses and that beam of light focuses on the tip of the candle column, which almost looks like a flame on a candle. And so as we go through the sequence of the solstice, where the sun is coming down the west wall, and you're tracking it down, you'd be standing here and I'd be asking you to look to the west and you'd see this drape of light coming to the floor. And then suddenly as it kisses the floor and you focus to the east wall, you're suddenly pulling the drape of shadow up the wall as if you're raising a stage curtain. So as you're tracking back and forth and all of a sudden there'll be this moment when both lights have shade and shadow that are parallel, they're balanced, you can feel it. And then as you're looking to the north, you suddenly look up at the tips of the candles and what has suddenly magically appeared is literally a bright dagger of light at the tip of every candle. So all the columns in the room, it appears as if light, a match has been struck and there's light at the tip of the candle because you've lit the candles. At that moment, when both light, east and west walls are in balanced light, you realize that you've approached this point of stasis and summer is, we still know on the way, but it's going to fall already. And so it's this whole transition. Now cultures throughout history have celebrated the solstice for reasons of planning cycles. And we celebrate the cycles of the sun, the coming of summer, when we plant crops, we have equinox, we have solstice. And so this is a unique thing and where there's a few examples like the solar observatory at Chichen Itza, where at sunrise they celebrate this, Stonehenge, various alignments are noted, but there's few contemporary built environments that have come to focus on it the way this building does. Being that the sun is both overbearing and yet our great friend in this Valley of the Sun, we felt it appropriate to create this special hypostyle hall celebrating the natural phenomenon of the passage of the universe. As a person who prides themselves in being part of his community and having the ability as an architect to create places of memory and places of discovery and places of both, you know, the unexpected and, uh, you know, a library is, is one of the best building types I can think as an architect to get to do. I've had the good fortune of doing 
a lot of libraries, a number of libraries, as well as some art museums, and my cultural buildings are my joy. Uh, houses are wonderful. The city fabric is important. Every building in the city is important, and I really value that. But I've had the, the privilege of working on libraries, and this, of course, is, uh, I was a young man in my 40s when this was uh, being conceived and, and built. And to be here at this point and see how it's worked and continues to work, how it's been adopted and loved and cared for and used and uh, kept pace with the times. Because when we started this, as I was saying, the computer was a new invention to the information highway that the library would contain and become. And, you know, we designed this building to be flexible, to be able to shift and move with things we didn't even know would exist. We think it's done a pretty good job. We really appreciate how our community is taking care of it and loves it. And that's the most that architect can ask for in his life is to have created places of memory that are embraced by the, the communities they were designed for. So that's what a library is all about. It gives you the best of all worlds. We have the, the greatest windows to the very best technology. We have all of the sort of sharing and collaboration spaces, but we also have the ability to have this engagement with a discovery that you weren't even thinking about when you walked through the door. It just comes upon you. It's about life. It's about living in a city. It's about living in nature. A library is about all those things rolled into one. Thank you, Will, for not only that wonderful briefing on what makes this library so magical, but also your continued commitment to this amazing afternoon. I love being part of the Phoenix Public Library Foundation because we have the great privilege of enhancing and supporting the impactful work that the libraries do for families across my hometown. When it was announced that library buildings would close, the Phoenix Public Library rose to the challenge and reframed how it would serve the community. As an educator, I understand firsthand how valuable the library's services are at its free education access center, College Depot. The College Depot team was able to quickly transition appointments to telephone and web, and I'm proud to tell you, they didn't turn away a single student. Along with support from our donors, we've been able to remove barriers and provide resources that help students continue their education. College Depot has served 7,000 students virtually, and now I want you to meet two of these remarkable students. I'm so grateful for College Depot's unconditional support through probably one of my hardest semesters in school yet. It had been two months since I've returned from my study abroad experience in Chile and I was struggling. I was struggling to adapt and to figure out who I was back home. And even through that, they were able to connect me to grant opportunities to help alleviate my stress and focus on my classes, which is actually really needed at the time. So now knowing how much the Libraries Foundation has dedicated to me, I am dedicated to paying it forward and helping students in the future. So happy solstice everyone and happy 25th birthday to the Burton Bar Central Library. Well, um, my name is Prince El Morin and I just completed my junior year at Arizona State University in Barrett. The honors college. Uh, this semester was kind of uh, complicated uh, because uh, everything was converted into online classes. And as a matter of fact, I was taking um, 15 credit hours and three honors classes and two regular classes. And I was also taking classes in Tempe and downtown Phoenix. Um, you know, everything was just very, very difficult. And I wanted to give up because I never believed that I was capable of ready, ready in the past in those classes. And as a matter of fact, it was my first time taking an online class. I've never done an online class before. But College Depot was there. They encouraged me. They gave me hope and inspiration. They tell me you can do it. Julia and Robert, they always tell me, Prince, you can do it. And because of that sense of optimism, that you know, encouragement, uh, I never gave up. I was able to um, complete the semester with a 4.0 GPA. And you know that, that was just exciting. Also, when I needed books, you know that was another thing I really needed help with. Uh, when I called College Depot, they were able to accommodate me. So, and because of all the help, the encouragement, and you know, the support, uh, I was able to really, really do well in my um, semester at ASU. So, I want to say thank you so much. What a great honor! That you know, the time I really needed help, that was the time that College Depot was able to aid me. So, I want to say thank you so much for that. With schools closed, we know that families have struggled to find engaging and appropriate content for kiddos. As a former first grade teacher been most impressed by the library staff's ability to reimagine critical early literacy programs. 
our family favorite, story time. Live, recorded, sometimes we watch in Spanish. Here's Miss Gretchen to tell you more. Hi, I'm Miss Gretchen. I host family story times online for our littlest customers and their adults. Every week we get to play, sing, read, and dance. Storytime builds vocabulary and a love of reading and helps kids become successful in school. Thank you so much for being here to support these essential programs. Good afternoon, I'm Centauri Minor, proud Phoenician, passionate social impact advocate and lover of our library. As you've heard, during these uncertain times, one thing is certain, Phoenix Public Library is here for you. For more than 100 years, Phoenix Public Library has provided vital services that are responsive, flexible, and innovative. Now, I've always been proud of the work the library does in our community, but I've never been more proud than I am right now at how they've quickly responded to today's circumstances. Please join me in supporting the Phoenix Public Library Foundation, where all donations made today will go directly to the programs you heard from earlier from Akshay. Also, thanks to a generous donor and in honor of Burton Barr's 25th anniversary, we are matching up to $5,000 of your donations. That means your donation will have double the impact and go twice as far. Thank you for investing in our community and the families we serve. You are inspiring children to have a love of reading and motivating students to keep their eyes on the prize, knowing that they will have a support network that will ensure success. My heart is full of hope after seeing our community band together. Thank you for being here with us today to celebrate Solstice and learn more about the Phoenix Public Library Foundation. Enjoy and make it a great day. This is a building now after 25 years is old news, but it's still new news. And that's been very gratifying. So we really appreciate your interest in taking time to be listening on this conversation that we have had with, with a friend about the building and hopefully in an off year where we still don't have access to the building, uh, it will continue to uh, inspire your interest and your support and your investment in this ongoing important artifact to our community.